everybody, it's me and Heathcliff. Heathcliff, you have such pretty hair. You have such pretty hair. Yeah. Um, how's everybody? I want to say hello and Happy New Year. Um, I'm going to be doing more video blogs. This is the first one I'm going to do. Um, and, um, sometimes Heath will join me. Sometimes my husband will join me. It's obviously easy, raw life. And I wanted to address that actually about our channel being called Easy Raw Life or Easy Raw Food. And I feel like, you know, when we started going raw, it was easy for us because we had money and um, we had the resources. We were in a place that um, we were able to find those resources pretty easily and we had friends. And um, it's not that we don't have that now here in Seattle, but it's... Um, coming back it's been hard to get back into the same kind of routines that we were when we were back home and um, you know I, I guess I'll just address you know the, the idea of eating cooked food as an option as a backup plan and um, for me I feel like you know I was really good I was high raw for a very long time very very little cooked food if I had any for maybe even four months and then there'd be a you know a time where you know fruit wasn't available and maybe I couldn't get a smoothie or for dried fruit and personally I don't like dried fruit very much I never really liked dates and those types of food kind of hurt my teeth I have good teeth but it's the it's sugary so I usually blend those types of things up but anyways all I just want to like kind of talk about is that like for me, I don't know, for a lot of people, going back to cooked foods is not optimal because then you get breakouts and you feel s slow and you may even get physically sick. And I've had all of those things. It really feels like it's not worth it. But at the same time, I would rather not starve myself because I have a history of both depression and fainting. And if I don't eat enough, um, it's not very pleasant and i much rather eat cooked foods and, you know, faint and have a concussion or, you know, you know, get depressed and not feel happy. <laughs> so, I mean, not that cooked foods makes me, like, tremendously happy, but at least it gets me through. Um, and, of course, like, my goal is to be 100%. I mean, I want to be, I want to be optimal as much as possible. And, um, it, but you know, it may not always be possible and I'm, and I'm glad there's people out there that have the resources and the money and the know how to do it. And I'm glad that they're there. I think that maybe it's time that those individuals like come forward. Like when you say to everybody like, yeah, you, like, you know, you should have this in your kitchen or you should have this and this is what I recommend. I know that's what people recommend. And just know that everybody's different and they're coming from different places and like it's hard to say that everybody can have optimal health because even if you're like eating 100% raw and you live on another side of the country I just want people to understand that like I'm not probably making much sense here but that just because one person is eating a small amount of cooked food on one side of the world and another person is eating 100% raw and maybe their ratio is whatever does it like I don't know why it's a race to see who's most optimal or healthy I think my issue is that uh, people are not very I guess their motivation is in the right place they don't they're not like doing it for the right reasons I guess and not that like I mean there's lots of reasons to do it like for example like I want to start this YouTube channel and I want to make myself out put myself out there so that I can help other people first and foremost um, and then you know honestly I do need means to continue the diet like I f honestly feel like in the last year like me and my husband have spent a lot of money on food and I it may be the reason why we're as broke as we are right now so for people to like say that like people that are broke or like people around the world who are impoverished aren't finding optimal health because they eat potatoes and rice it's like it hurts because it's like I don't want to eat those things 
but I die if I don't. And I don't feel unhealthy. I feel the healthiest I've ever have. And it's not, it's not something that I think people should battle with. No one should battle with that. I just feel like the people that are like recommending high raw and then condemning people for eating cooked are not being very sympathetic. I guess the word would be apathetic in which you're like, oh, well, that's too bad. And like right now, like since we've gone raw and we started talking about being a vegan to, the mass majority of people. People, it's hard to fuck enough to get people to go vegan. And for fuck's sake, I don't care about my health, but I honestly really do care about the animals because it's all related. And I want to give myself self-love and really treat myself the best as if I possibly can, but like you can only do what you can. And I feel like people's motivation should be for the animals first and not for themselves to get health because it just feels like that's gonna make you hurt others in the long run because you're, you become a person that people might admire because you're doing something very purely, but at the same time, if you're just acting like, well, anybody can do it without giving any sort of like, oh, understanding, and I'm like, I was there, you know, I know how you feel, like, it took me five years to go completely raw, or, you know, it took me this many years to actually start being able to afford to, you know, start a co-op, or this or that, and so, I just feel like people should be more honest, and I guess that's why I'm here, because I want to be honest, and, you know, I'm not a perfect person, I have my, my things that I do that probably aren't the healthiest, and I, you know, health is a thing that is, you know, it's everything. It's, it's sleep. It's healthy relationships. Um, it's, you know, it's water and it's, it's a lot of other things just more than diet. And, uh, and I see that in a lot of unhealthy people because um, I think that there are different levels of healthy. Like, I, I think it's possible to have somewhat a somewhat good amount of health, even if you're eating small amounts of meat and cheese, and 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 you know, maybe the majority of your your uh, you know diet is fruits and vegetables, but you you know do that once a week or something. I mean, you, it's possible to be healthy, but it's not the healthiest. Um, and I think that you know eating cooked food is healthy. It's not the healthiest. I think eating raw is healthier it's not healthiest it's not optimal like I think you know like honestly like well, who I think is optimal about their diet is you know Ann Osborne but she's been doing it for a very long time and um, she's someone I really look to because she's also really ethical about it like I, that's that's why it always comes back to the ethical thing and it's hard because I don't understand why people take the ethical thing so, like, ooh, let's not talk about being ethical. Like, why not? Don't you want to be ethical? Like, I mean, maybe it does point out the fact that you are doing something wrong, but at the same time, like, I know this is my, this is how I've been doing this, and I kind of feel like this is how I've been dealing with the whole, like, controversy of, like, you know, cooked food versus low fat, high fat, you know, who's a pioneer or whatever. I feel like... All of that is not important. <laughs> it's just not important. But it is important because there's lots of people out there that really need help. And it's a big enough, big enough of a battle to convince people to go vegan. And I just am ranting and I'm saying what's on my mind and um, I do get emotional. And... Uh, I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> so that's me for today. Bye.